Hey guys, it is me, Happy Psychic, and welcome to Last and Earth Survival. Today I want to talk about 15 things I want to see added or changed in Last and Earth Survival. And I can hear some of you screaming already, oh my god, Psyrek, this game is perfect, it doesn't need any changes. And hey, that's a valid thought, some people think it's a perfect game. However, I think majority of the players would love to see some changes. I also want to mention that this list doesn't go in any particular order. So let's begin with the first thing I want to be added to this game, and that is a lumber mill. Farming trees in Last and Earth Survival is pretty boring, so imagine not having to farm them. I'm not not saying that farming should be removed completely from the game, but imagine if we had some sort of a lumber mill. Let's say it worked something like Bunker Alpha. So when you would clear that lumber mill, instead of getting guns and healing items, you would get wood. I have no idea how much wood. It would depend how many zombies we have to kill there. It depends how many guns we'd have to use there. But I think clearing the location and getting wood that way is going to be more fun than just farming it. However, if you want to farm, there's still an option for you to farm. Currently, I'm farming a lot of ash trees. A lot of you are probably farming a lot of oak trees. Maybe it wouldn't be as efficient, but it would be much more fun to get wood from the lumber mill. And speaking about farming, let's talk about the second thing I'd love to see being added to this game. And that is a chainsaw or a jackhammer. So imagine getting a chainsaw and chopping down trees much, much faster. Maybe even getting double the trees. Imagine getting a jackhammer and getting iron or stones much, much faster and much more of that stone and iron. So we could get the jackhammer or the chainsaw from whatever location. We could even get it maybe from that lumber mill. But imagine getting that jackhammer or the chainsaw from the crater. Currently, not a lot of people are playing in the crater because it's kind of boring. It's also kind of pointless to play in this crater because nothing you get here will be transferred to your main world. So imagine playing here in the crater, perhaps clearing like some sort of a location. Obviously it should be doable. And then imagine we could send that jackhammer or the chainsaw back to our main world through the inbox. So that would be like killing two rabbits with one stone. The crater finally sees more action. The crater finally becomes useful and we can get more wood in the main world. The third thing that I'd love to be changed in this game is better loot in hard mode bunker alpha. Currently by clearing hard mode bunker alpha, you get some military notebooks, you get some chevrons, you get some ID tags, and then you can exchange that stuff and get a floppy crate. The floppy crate loot has to be much, much better because currently it's not really worth it. As you can see inside of floppy crates, you can get two C4s, so it's nice. Sometimes, the keyword is sometimes, you can get a grenade launcher. Most of the time, you don't really get a grenade launcher. The fourth addition I'd love to see being added to this game is a huge quality of life improvement, and that is the auto sword button. We kind of already have this auto sword button that can auto sword our inventory, and that is great. But imagine if we had another button that when clicked, all of your loot gets transferred to your chest. So for example, here I have these bandages and all of the loot would get automatically transferred here to these chests with bandages. That would be so amazing. It would save an insane amount of time. Maybe it would be difficult to implement that, but that's what I would love to see in the game. Every time you come home with a lot of loot, you spend an insane amount of time sorting out your base. We've already gotten a lot of great quality of life improvements. Now we have this global inventory. We can see how many resources we got. For example, I can see that I have 186 rope in my base. However, I don't have any rope in my inventory. Back in the days, you had to have all of the resources on you if you wanted to craft anything in the base. So we've already gotten some nice quality of life improvements. However, this like global auto sword button would be an absolute game changer. The fifth thing that I want to see changed in this game is better loot in the laboratory. The laboratory is pretty difficult and it doesn't really give amazing loot. You need to use a lot of melee weapons if you want to wall trick. You also need to use some guns. You need a lot of healing items, some armor. And yes, the laboratory is useful if you still don't have your drone. So for those who do I know you can get flight controllers by killing the bosses at A2 and B2 sectors. However, once you get those flight controllers and you assemble your drone, then the laboratory becomes pretty much pointless. The loot inside of those laboratory crates isn't that much worth it. So currently here you can see the loot from the A hard mode sector. We only get four guns and some armor. It's nice, but we had to use an insane amount of Genesis weapons to get this crate. It's not worth it. And here we have the hard mode B crate. It does have five guns. It has some Genesis guns. It has some carbon composite so it does feel like, hey, we have a lot of loot, but we had to spend here an insane amount of guns. And same thing goes for the normal laboratory crates. They aren't really worth it. The sixth thing that I want changed in the game is also better loot in Bunker Bravo. Surprise, surprise. Bunker Bravo is useful if you want to assemble your ATV, but hey, once you are done building your ATV, it's pretty much pointless. When there's the Bunker Bravo event, you can clear the second floor and you can get a decent amount of carbon composites. So in my opinion, that is worth it, but only during the event. And that only goes for the second floor because this is the the crate from the second floor. Now, the crate from the third floor is a lot worse. You do get here some ATV parts, but when you assemble your ATV, this crate becomes pointless. And now this is the fourth crate. It has even less carbon composites. It's only useful for this red gas cylinder because you need them to assemble your ATV. So once you have your ATV, this place becomes obsolete. I think Bunker Bravo is one of the more fun locations in the game. It is very difficult, but I think if we were getting here better loot, the difficulty wouldn't matter as much. The seventh thing that I'd love to be added or changed in the 
game that is better loot in the abandoned factory. Currently, it's kind of pointless. You get borderline motel loot and it's more difficult than the motel. Plus, it removed the red forest. A lot of people liked the red forest. So while we are on this topic, it would be cool to get the red forest location while we also have better loot in this abandoned factory. And speaking of better loot, let's talk about the eighth thing I want to see added or changed in the game and that is having better loot in the season pass. I don't think we have completely horrible season passes. They are kind of fine. However, I do believe that season passes could be a lot better. We almost always get the same loot here. It's great that at level 33, we get these extremely rare weapon mods. It's absolutely amazing. However, without these mods, the season pass becomes absolutely garbage. So all I'm trying to say, it would be nice to see here some sort of better rewards. Maybe having a tactical backpack here because getting a tactical backpack right now is pretty difficult. Back in the days, we used to get a tactical backpack in the season passes. So it'd be cool to see it once again here. The ninth quality of life improvement is pretty simple. I'd love to be able to craft 10 items at a time. Currently, you can only craft one thing at a time. Imagine if there was a button where I could craft 10 bandages at the same time. It is very simple. However, that would save some time. Sometimes you need to craft 28 kits because because raiders want that so imagine crafting 10 first aid kits or crafting 10 bandages at the same time it's not really that huge just a small quality of life improvement the 10th thing that i'd love to see changed in the game are the lead crate ores for those who do not know you can get those lead crate ores from the swamp location in this drilling rig all you need to have is a car battery you start this drilling rig and once you start the drilling rig there will be a lot of zombies attacking you once you're done fighting and killing all of the zombies you will be able to grab this lead crate and bring it back to the base and obviously to bring it back to the base you will will have to have your ATV assembled. And if you want to open this crate, you have to have the acid bath. And with the help of the acid bath, we can open up this crate. And inside of this crate, we only get 20 lead ores, which are absolutely useless. There's nothing you can do with these lead ores. I mean, I shouldn't say nothing because you can press them into lead place and then you can craft these hazmat jackets that are ridiculously expensive. And by the time you have the ATV, you don't really need these lead plates. So one of the viewers suggested during the live stream that we should be able to get here lots of different ores. And I absolutely agree with that. Imagine getting Getting copper ores here, iron ores here, perhaps even titanium ores or whatever other ores, perhaps stones, I don't know. It's just that this crate is really bad. I think it could be a lot better. And speaking about the acid bath, let's talk about the 11th thing that I want to see changed in the game, and that is having more crates for the acid bath. It takes quite a while to assemble that acid bath, but once you assemble it, there are only like two or three crates in the entire game that you can use. These infected floppy crates are pretty random. You don't always get them, but even when you get them, they aren't as good as the normal floppy crates. And then you have to bring this infected floppy crate back to the base. I think it's a nice mechanic. For that, you have to obviously have your chopper. You have to have the acid bath. It's interesting, but you rarely use this acid bath. So I want this acid bath to be used more frequently. And just for those curious from the infected floppy crate, this is the kind of loot you can expect. You don't always get grenade launchers, so don't think that you can always get them. And you don't even get an entire armor set. That's why I said that normal floppy crates are better. We can also get this crane key crate from the port location. You also need to have the chopper in order to bring this crane key crate back to the base. Once again, for that, you have to use your acid bath. And when you're done using it, this is the kind of loot you can expect. And that's also imagine having more crates that need this acid bath. I think it's such a nice feature, but it's heavily underused. So I'd love to see more some sort of infected crates that need the acid bath. And now let's talk about the 12th edition that I'd love to see in last generation survival. And that is being able to pack or send crates from the base. I think it is a nice system being able to send these crates and whatever, but it's such a hassle. First of all, you have to remember all of these crates. You have to know what kind of resources you need to bring here in order to build these crates. Second of all, once you build those crates, you have to remember what kind of resources you have to put in those crates. And just imagine now for a second, if we could build this box assembler and this packing table at the base. Plus, if we could use this global inventory system at the base, we wouldn't even have to search for those resources. We just have to click one button and boom, we could get this box. Then we could like fill up those boxes or whatever. Maybe we could even have the computer at the base to know what kind of crates we can send today. Then all we have to do is just come to the port location and send those crates and that's it. Because I am pretty sure I'm not the only one who finds it extremely boring, extremely annoying to go to the port location to see what kind of crates you can send. Then you go back to the base, you get the resources, you come back here, you craft those crates, you forget some of the resources. It's just such a hassle. So I really, really, really want to see this quality of life improvement. I don't think it's that difficult. Please let us have this packing table and this box assembler at the base. And while we're at it, let us also have this concrete mixer at the base. Let us craft this concrete mixer. If you don't want to let us have this concrete mixer in the base, add this concrete mixer to the settlement because you have to come here with the resources to get the cement and it takes a lot of energy to get to the port location. And the 13th thing that I want to see changed or added to the game is quite obvious. There are a lot of things that have been teased and we've never gotten them. Like for example, this submarine at the port location. I want to see this submarine. There's this thing. We still don't have the submarine. I want 
to see it in the game. At the laboratory on the third floor, we have this trolley room and sadly we cannot assemble it. We do have most of the resources. However, we still don't have these processor units. These processors are still not in the game. We have no clue what this trolley will do. Oh, we have here a couple of fast biters. I thought I've already killed these fast biters. So yeah, nobody knows where this trolley would lead. It's still quite sad to see that we don't have the trolley and we don't even know what this trolley is supposed to do. We still don't have this oil rig. It says that you need to have a helicopter. So we still don't have the helicopter. And speaking of the things that we don't have, we still obviously don't have this bunker, Charlie. So it'd be nice to see all of those locations in the game. And also for those who didn't know, once you're done building everything in this Western Watchtower, when you unlock your ATV, you will be able to unlock the suburbs here. However, you cannot go to those suburbs yet as well. So I want to see suburbs being added to the game. The 14th thing that I'd love to see changed is the ATV. First of all, it's very expensive to get. It has become a lot easier to assemble the ATV in the past few years, but it's still very, very difficult. It's still very expensive. It is extremely difficult to get ATV transmissions. You might get lucky. You might get some of those ATV transmissions by doing those port deliveries. Now you can also get some of those ATV transmissions by doing the transport hub. But again, all of that stuff is RNG. It's random. Some people have gotten ATV transmissions that way. Some people till this day have gotten zero ATV transmissions by doing the transport hub or sending the deliveries. And even then, it takes you many months, maybe even many years to assemble this ATV. And once you're done with it, it's quite disappointing. You can only get ash trees. And with those ash trees, you can build better chests and that's it. You can upgrade these racks and then you'll be able to store 70 items in one chest. You can upgrade these chests 11 times and each upgrade gives you five extra slots and you need 40 of those ash planks. So it takes a really long time to get enough of those ash planks. And that's pretty much it. That's all you get with that ATV. With the ATV, you also unlock this hydroponic system that is completely useless. You also unlock this chemistry station that is absolutely useless. So I'd love to see some ATV exclusive events such as like ATV rest stop, maybe ATV exclusive locations like some sort of bunker alpha, but for the ATV. So I guess cheaper and easier to obtain ATV plus better rewards when you unlock that ATV it would be very, very appreciated. And the 15th thing that I'd love to see changed in this game is having a better settlement. First of all, it's not really rewarding, but we're going to talk about that later. Second of all, it is very, very confusing. You have to build all of these walls. It's very expensive. You have to build lots of here different rooms. There are like a bunch of rules. You cannot share the same room, blah, blah, blah. There are lots of different levels. There are lots of different things that you have to build here. That adds a little bit to the confusion. Maybe the UI here could have been a little bit different. Maybe players should have had a little bit less freedom because you let them build this entire huge base, but yet you don't allow us to move these walls. You can only destroy them. And these walls are very expensive. At least you should let us take things in our inventory and then maybe replace them or something. Because if you could build these things and then move walls and floors around, I think that would help a lot of players. However, on top of that, the settlement is much more difficult because then you have to add these aluminum wirings to connect workbenches, and yet you cannot add those aluminum wirings on these rocks. So then it becomes like some sort of a puzzle, even though it's already puzzling enough and extremely expensive and not profitable. And to make matters even worse, we have different rocks for the water pipe. So you also, when you unlock that water pump, you have different rocks for the water pumps. You have different rocks for the power. It's just so confusing. It's difficult for absolutely no reason. And on top of that, most of the grind here is not even worth it. I do believe that the settlement is very, very, very important for the beginners. As here, you can get some daily loot and daily loot is pretty awesome. Once you level up here high enough, you will be able to get a daily carbon composite plus a daily factory part. However, you can unlock these carbon composites and factory parts only when you've unlocked this old train station. So that is the level three expedition and plus Plus you have to reach here level 15. So it will take you quite a bit of time to unlock this thing, but hey, then you'll be able to get a daily carbon composite, which is kind of cool. But besides the daily rewards, the settlement is not worth it. And even with the daily rewards, the settlement is much more expensive. Like here we go. Currently daily, I get 30 planks, which are nothing. You need plenty more planks in order to progress in the settlement. I only get 20 iron, which is nothing if you want to progress in the settlement. So as you can see, the loot that you get here from the settlement is okay. But if you want to work on the settlement, it's not worth it. So I'm really having high hopes for this dual mode, for the capture mode, for the evacuation mode. Maybe these modes will save the settlement. And we absolutely need to be able to move these walls and floors. It's absolutely ridiculous that we cannot do that. So these are the 15 things that I want to see changed or added to the game. Let me know your thoughts about them. And if you have any other suggestions, then leave them in the comments down below. And I highly suggest you check out my everything you need to know about last on Earth video or click here on the second card and look at my Days Gone Let's Play or hop over to my channel, go to playlist, and there you'll find a lot of other games that are played here on the channel. If you're not subscribed yet, definitely make sure to jump subscribe button and notification bell to not miss any future videos. And see you in the next one.